Cardano's Jed is getting media exposure all across the crypto space. But exposure doesn't always translate to comprehension of value. So let's break it down. Welcome to Late Game Crypto. My name is Josh and I'm here to help you find digital liberty in the complex world of crypto. Remember, anything you hear in any of my videos is not to be taken as financial advice. Do your own research and own your own decisions. While it is technically categorically correct to call Jed an algorithmic stablecoin because of its autonomous, decentralized, protocol-driven nature, Cody prefers the term over-collateralized stablecoin. Before we can really understand why that distinction from other stablecoins matters, we first have to understand some of the shortcomings in the crypto space up to this point, or in other words, the problems that Jed aims to solve. The first problem is treasury management. Based on the kinds of questions that I get in the comments section of my videos and on Twitter, I don't think that a lot of people seem to grasp how common under collateralization actually is in stablecoins. In the history of stablecoin failures, it's not a situation of, oh, we held 110% collateralization and that was a risk when the market started to go down. No, it's more like, oh, we held on to 70% and then it went down to 35% and now we can't pay anybody back. There's a pretty considerable history of stablecoin failures, and it's almost always the exact same situation when a bank or a centralized exchange goes insolvent. They don't have enough money to pay millions of people back. Except the difference there is that when asset management companies go down, they declare bankruptcy and freeze withdrawals. When stablecoins go down, they experience a depegging event where the open market reflects the US dollar stablecoin price worth less than the US dollar. The second major problem in the area of stablecoins is transparency. This one is sometimes very closely related to the first problem because insolvency doesn't just happen naturally, at no fault to any responsible parties. And it would be a heck of a lot harder for responsible parties to poorly manage treasury assets if there was transparency. Every single stablecoin failure, and while we're at it, most economic meltdowns in the history of modern civilization have been either as a result of poor management or poor design. These stablecoin meltdowns would have been infinitely more predictable and in some cases prevented altogether if everything was fully transparent and the public could just watch what was happening in real time. And it's not like this is just a niche problem within small parts of the crypto space Tether, which is the single biggest stablecoin of all time in the crypto space, they've been promising transparency for like seven years now or something, and still we have no idea what their treasury consists of and if they are fully collateralized. Now, there are a lot of really cool functionalities to the JED. For example, IOG and Cody have designed it to eventually be able to pay transaction fees on the Cardano network instead of ADA to basically solve the problem of gas fee inflation altogether. There's also been substantial advances to payment infrastructure so that Cardano can expand into RealFi and effectively increase the demand for the JED and the Cardano ecosystem as a whole. For the purposes of this video, I won't spend any more time talking about the innovative potential of JED. What I really want to focus on is what JED does differently to address the problems of treasury management and transparency, which are the two biggest problems in stablecoins, in crypto, and honestly in economy in general. When it comes to stablecoin treasuries, there's basically two main ways to go. You could go with a fiat-backed treasury so that every individual stablecoin is 
theoretically, represented by the pegged currency 1 to 1. In terms of value, this model, as long as it remains 100% collateralized, poses zero threat to that first problem of treasury management. But this model is inherently centralized because you have to rely on a third party to store and manage the collateral treasury. So there's a huge risk there in terms of transparency. The other route to go would be the algorithmic stablecoin model, which is a much higher risk to the value of the treasury, even if all of the transactions and the treasury wallet is publicly viewable because the value is entirely backed by cryptocurrencies, which is categorically a risk on asset just as an industry. The real danger is probably somewhere in the middle between these two because these two models are not mutually exclusive with one another. There are plenty of stablecoins that have and do expose themselves to the worst of both worlds. Like I had mentioned before, the JED is categorically in the algorithmic stablecoin camp, so it completely circumvents the issue of transparency. The JED is designed to be a completely transparent, autonomous, trustless protocol. So all they gotta do is design it as a machine to not depeg and autonomously drive us into the ground like the last three to five big algorithmic stable coins. Which honestly should be easy, or at least significantly easier than it seems, because all of these previous protocols, they all have a common thread of operating under collateral, as in they never had enough money to pay everybody back, and I do mean all of them. Basis Cash, Empty Set Dollar, Iron Finance, and Terra Luna all crashed and burned because they were only partially collateralized. And I'm not talking when the market started to go down. I'm talking about at their peak health. I don't know where this misconception came from that stablecoins will start to depeg once they go below 100% collateral value. The problem was that all of these stablecoins operated under partial collateralization by intention, which is so stupid, but I guess it's more difficult to think logically when you're driven by just pure greed. The JED protocol does the right thing by limiting the stablecoin circulating supply, even though they could make a ton more money just on transaction fees by continuing to roll away at the money printer. Whenever the JED treasury is concurrently at or below 400%, the US dollar equivalent of the circulating supply of JED, JED tokens will no longer be allowed to be minted from the protocol. So if there's 1 million JED tokens out in circulation, just free in the ecosystem, there needs to be at all times $4 million worth of ADA in the treasury in order for any JED tokens to be minted. So if at any point this is the case and you need to swap for a stablecoin, you'll either have to go with a different stablecoin option and there will be others available, or you'll have to go and swap on a DEX with the existing pool of circulating JED, which might very well be in pretty limited quantities in the very beginning because of the strict token supply. If you're sitting there asking yourself, how in the world is the JED treasury ever going to mint any new JED tokens if they need to have a four to one ratio in the treasury? Nobody's willingly gonna go and swap $4 of their value for $1 in JED. And if that's you, you're asking the right questions, I would love to tell you. This is where the Shen token comes into play. And naturally, way more people know about the JED than they do about the Shen, but you really have to know what the Shen token is in order to understand what the JED brings to the table. Shen is the reserve token for the JED treasury, which means the entire point of it 
is to fill the Jed treasury with Ada. Why in the world would anybody want to do that? Why would somebody willingly give up their Ada just to fill it to back the value of a token that they may or may not own? I could tell you some of the reasons that people will not be buying the Shen token, but they all kind of fall under the category of the Shen is not built or designed to be your next get rich quick scheme. It's not going to be the next 100x token. I'm still kind of deciding where I'm at with the short to midterm versus long term value of this token, but there's some questions that I need answered before I can get there. People are incentivized to buy Shen because they are rewarded with a portion of the platform fees from minting and burning both Jed and Shen tokens. And the rewards are protected by capping the minting of Shen tokens whenever the collateral reserve reaches 800% capacity. As much as I can appreciate that defense mechanism put in place to protect Shen holders, I have serious doubts that that's ever actually going to happen. If it does happen, it's probably going to happen earlier on in the protocol because as the circulating supply of Jed increases over time steadily, it's going to be significantly harder to reach eight times the collateral value of what's out there. I kind of expect it to hover right around the 400 to 500% range during relatively normal market cycles. And then whenever a bull market hits, maybe we'll get as high as 600%. There is, of course, a risk to owning Shen tokens. When the collateral reserves dips below 400%, not only does the protocol stop the minting of Jed tokens, but it also stops the burning of Shen tokens, which is how you get your reward. This is probably pretty highly likely to happen in bear markets because people are going to be looking to put their ADA into Jed stable coins. And also there's going to be Shen holders that are looking to burn their tokens to get their rewards out of the protocol before the protocol stops them from doing so. I would kind of call Shen a passive income opportunity, but the rewards are not regularly airdropped to you. Like I just said, you have to go and burn your Shen tokens to get your rewards out of it. So I suppose it's a little loose on the income part of it and also on the passive part of it. But this part of the protocol I think is really clever. So all of the fees that are made from minting and burning both Shen and Jed tokens will be put into a separate wallet, I assume, but it still will be counted as part of the collateral reserve pool. Which makes complete sense to me because the Shen token is also affected by the reserve ratio, so it should be able to contribute back to it in whatever way that it can. This mechanism, though, creates an additional opportunity to create more value because it sounds like there will be ADA staking as part of the treasury mechanism. So it will be contributing to helping to run the network and it will earn interest naturally without anybody having to interact with the protocol. This will marginally but effectively reduce the risk on Shen holders, and it might even add to their rewards, and it will help to bolster the Jed treasury to add more stability to the asset. I'm just, I'm very impressed that they're able to create value around every corner. I still do have a couple of questions about the specifics regarding the mechanics of Shen. Like, is there actually any value in holding Shen over the long term, and I'm talking like five to 10 years. The rewards framework doesn't really seem to be time based, but rather more pool based. So holding for a longer period of time doesn't necessarily translate to more accumulated rewards. Shen is supposed to start at an initial price of one ADA per token, and it's going to fluctuate just like any other cryptocurrency. But I wonder if that price 
is supposed to be in some ways directly proportional or correlated with the rewards that are owed to each individual Shen token. And if that is the case, where the price is directly correlated with the rewards as defined by the protocol, what's to stop the open market from trying to sell Shen tokens for cheaper than what you can get them for on the protocol? In the event that a bear market pushes the collateral reserve below 400%, you know there's going to be people out there that are looking to recoup at least a portion of the liquidity that they initially spent on those Shen tokens. But in that scenario, the amount of ADA that is being spent on Shen tokens, maybe it's on the open market, maybe it's peer-to-peer, -peer, who knows, whatever it is, the point is that ADA is not going to directly contribute to the treasury. And is that something that we should be concerned of? These are concerns that I have thought of about assessing what the actual risk is of buying Shen tokens, but I'm sure there's more information that is coming out very soon on the specific mechanics of the Shen token, how the reward framework is going to work, but based on the information that we do have, the protocol appears to be very well designed and very different than what we have seen before. And also, actually, if you think about it, there is extra incentive to buy Shen tokens whenever it's below that 400% collateral reserve ratio, simply because nobody is allowed to burn those tokens whenever it's in that range. So as long as you're long on ADA and you believe that the Cardano ecosystem is going places, then you believe that it's going to eventually return above that 400% reserve ratio, and that's practically a guaranteed profit. Nothing is a guaranteed profit. This is crypto. I don't give financial advice. But let me know down in the comments section what you'd think. Are you excited about this protocol? Do you plan on getting access to either of these assets, the Jed or the Shen? I want to know your thoughts. Hit me up. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss any of my Cardano-based content every Tuesday and Thursday. As always, remember never to invest more than what you can afford to lose. Learn as much as you can about this space and play for licking. Thanks so much for watching.